Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with Developer University. For more of my training videos for beginners, please visit me at devu.com. In the previous lesson, we looked at how to format strings and how to manipulate strings, whether it be for display or for the purpose of massaging data. In this lesson, we'll do the same thing except for dates. So we'll start off by talking about formatting dates and times. We'll look at how to add and subtract time to a given date. We'll look at how to create a date time object uh, in, that represents this moment in time or the past or the future. And then finally, we'll look at how to determine the length or the duration of time between two date time objects. So to begin, I've created a new project called Dates and Times. Pause the video, please, and catch up with me. Uh, and what we'll do here is actually just create a new date time object by going date time and we'll just call this my value and we're going to initialize its value to a valid date time so the easiest way to do that is to represent this very moment as the application is executing so we'll go date time dot now and that represents this instant all right and the easiest thing that we can do is just do a console.write line taking my value and calling the toString method. Now you'll see we have a lot of two something strings and we'll look at a several of these uh, in an effort to format our, our date time uh, the way that we want. But this default toString method will take our, our country and our um, locale and will uh, present dates and times as they are typically presented in our country and in our culture. So here in the United States, we usually represent the month first and then the date. I know in other countries, most other countries, it's date, month, year. Uh, and then we have the time of afternoon that I'm actually recording the video. Notice that it also has AM, PM as opposed to military time or 24 hours. So in order to change the way that this is presented, we're given a bunch of other additional helper methods uh, and so we can do something like this so my value dot two short date string and this will this will just display the month date year we can also do and isolate the short time string so here we just want to display what time of day it is all right, 3.35 in the afternoon, great. Uh, we can also choose a more long form version of the date. And you can see it's Tuesday, March 15, 2016 as I record this. And we can do the same longer version for time as well. So my value dot too long time string. Alright, and so you can see not only do we have hours and minutes, but also seconds uh, in the long time string. Great. Alright, so oftentimes what we'll want to do is do some date time math, which means we either want to add hours, minutes, I guess uh, seconds, uh, seconds, minutes, hours, uh, days, months, years, whatever the case might be. But we can do it through a series of helper methods, uh, the add methods. So here I'm just going to console write line and we'll take uh, my value and we'll start off with something simple like add days. You can see that we can add milliseconds, seconds, uh, hours, days, and everything up from there. So let's just do something simple like add days. So we'll add three days and then we'll just do a two long date string on it like that. Now you may have noticed me do this in the past where uh, I've used the, um, the period, remember that's the member access operator, and chain together a series of commands. So in this case, we have a value that represents a date. 
If I were to call the add days method, notice as I hover my mouse cursor over it that the return value of add days is another date time. So now since I have another date time in my hand that represents today plus three days, then I can call that date times to long date time string, which now returns, as you can see, a string data type. So that's the notion of chaining method calls together as long as you continue to chain together methods that return some value of some data type you can continue to call methods for that given data type all right so let's go ahead and see now three days from now it will be in fact march friday the march 18th and let's do uh something with regards to hours and uh let's um my value add hours and we'll add three hours to long time string and that will be 6.38 p.m. okay and then what if I wanted to subtract time are there any subtract hours or subtract days no however what you can do is simply um, use a negative number to subtract. So in, instead of adding days, I'll subtract days. And uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and run that. And you can see three days ago, it was Saturday, March 12th. Great. All right, so in addition, we can just grab off parts of a date or time. So uh, here again, let's go, whoops. Let's go my value and let's just pull off this current month and this will return an integer now console.write line we know can accept an integer so we'll just go ahead and print out the current month so the third month obviously that's going to be March okay all right now we've looked at how to create the current date time but what if I wanted to create a date time in the past or in the future I could do something like this so date time and I'm gonna call this my birthday uh, and here again is that new keyword that we've I've hinted at a number of times we will get to it don't don't worry uh, but I'm gonna use it one more time new date time and I'm gonna pass in the year 1969 the the month December and then the day the seventh that was when the day I was born and so now what I can do is uh, something like we've been doing up to this point console that right line and just uh, my birthday dot two short uh, date string just to prove that it's a date just like the other dates that we've been working with. So 12 7 1969. All right. Now there's one final way to create a new date time. So let's create another version of birthday equals date time dot parse. Remember we've used int parse. We we're able to take a string and turn it into an integer. Here we're going to take a string and turn it into a date, hopefully. So we'll just type in my birthday again one more time. And that should give us a date time object that represents December 7, 1969. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is try to determine how many hours that I've been alive or how many days I've been alive. Days is probably a more interesting number. And in order to represent a span of time, we're going to use a new data type called time span. So here I'm going to use a new time span. And we're going to call this my age equals datetime.now dot subtract. And the subtract method will take a uh, the current date and subtract whatever date we want to use. So in this case, we'll use my birthday. Okay, so now that I have an object that represents a span of time, I can say uh, represent that span of time in terms of days or years or whatever the case might be. So to do that, I'll go console.write line and then I'll use this my age dot and here I can say, give me the total number of days that I've been alive and print those to screen. And you can see I've been alive, what, almost, well, 16,900 days. Whew, I'm getting old. Okay, I say that every time I record this video and I feel older every time. So at any rate, uh, 
Here we were able to uh, format dates for display. We were able to manipulate dates by adding and subtracting date and time. And then we were able to determine the, uh, the difference between two dates using a time span object. We also talked about different ways to create a date, whether it be now or sometime in the past or future, by either just using one of the uh, versions of the date time objects constructor, we'll talk about that later, or by using datetime.parse and passing in a string. Okay, so uh, let's stop right there and we'll pick it up in the next lesson. Doing great. See you there. Thanks.